Hi everyone, what's up? Oh, welcome back to my channel. It's Jacoby and here's episode two of Volleyball Talk with Jacoby. My podcast, that's not really a podcast, so don't call it a podcast. Anyways, let's get into today's episode. Y'all know I have my special guest with me, my lovely, lovely Squishmallow and my volleyball. Love her. So let's get into some current events that y'all should know about if you're a volleyball player or volleyball fanatic, whatever it is. So the NCAA D1 volleyball rankings just came out and ooh, they are spicy. So let's go through it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, the rankings for the upcoming women's collegiate season just came out and you know, people always have their opinions <laughs> on that kind of stuff. So I thought I'd give my two cents, of course, cause I'm obnoxious, I guess. So they do rankings basically like first through 25th. So, you know, usually people who are ranked 25 are gonna be teams that are kind of like really, really good, like mid-major D1s. So we're talking like Western Kentucky, like Rice. Um, they're a team based out of Houston. They're gonna be like, you know, like a 20th to 25th place, even though they're very, very good. But let's start with number one. So it seems like the coaches poll put Texas at number one, as they should. I think Texas should be number one, absolutely. I mean, come on. They what? They won the last two championships, I believe. Yeah. And they're probably going to win a third. So let's be for real. Like, their team is stacked. Stacked. And no one told me that Madison Skinner literally has eligibility still. Hello? She's coming back for her fifth year at Texas, which is crazy. That girl's a pro. She's so good. So Texas definitely should be number one. Number two is Nebraska. I love Nebraska. They're so good. I think they're going to come back this year because, you know, if you watched the national championship last year, you know that was not their best showing ever. So I'm really rooting for them to, like, come back and, you know, put other pieces together. But right behind them at number three is Wisconsin. Now, Wisconsin is obviously very, very good, and they have been for a very long time. Now, I feel like they're kind of like the anti-hero villain of college volleyball like a lot of people do not like wisconsin i don't have a problem with them yeah I, I don't really have an opinion on them but they are very good they're very technically sound and their ball control is crazy also like a lot of the girls on their team are like six five six 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 eight six two six four like they're a very tall team also the big 10 in my humble opinion is the best conference oh i know i know i'm sorry i would say the sec but that's just not true I'm sorry. I feel like a traitor. And then coming in at number four, Pittsburgh. Ooh, okay. Pittsburgh, I love them. They're such a wild card, but I really hope that, that this year they can get past like the final four and get to the um and get to the finals game. That'd be really nice. Or um just have a really good season because I like watching them play. They're really exciting. They're like the really fun, scrappy team to watch. So I would definitely watch them if you can. Um and then at number five, we have Stanford. Above Louisville is crazy. No shade to Stanford, but come on. I feel like Louisville should be number five, but that's just my opinion. What do I know? I, I know nothing. That's just my opinion. But anywho, I, I really, okay, let me go ahead and put in my prediction for who's going to win the Natty right now. I am predicting that Texas is going to win again, unfortunately. Because I, I want, I, I don't like when people like repeat over and over and over again, unless it's like Alabama football, I'm like all for that, of course. <laughs> but I really want to see Louisville win one or Nebraska, Nebraska or Louisville. That's what, that's who I want to win, but who I think it's going to win is Texas. Okay. So let's just, let's just um, go through the rankings real quick after the top five. So number six is Louisville. Like I said, crazy seven Penn State love them eight Purdue nine Kentucky wow I didn't know Kentucky would be that high okay girls period number 10 is Oregon 11 Florida oh Florida they're a sleeper team for sure I love Florida they're so exciting to watch number 12 is Creighton 13 Kansas 14 Georgia Tech okay yellow jackets okay ladies 15 Tennessee SEC baby woo 16 BYU 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 is always really good 17 Arizona State Okay, they had a really good season last year, so that's probably why they're ranked so high. But keep in mind, these rankings, hold on, let me finish my thought first. Uh, 19, Arkansas. Okay, 20, Florida State. 21, USC. Ooh, y'all, I'm so excited about USC because Allie Batenhorst is on USC now, and I love her. She used to be on Nebraska, but she transferred. Love her. Love her, love her, love her. 22 is Dayton. Okay. Wow, I didn't know they were that good. 23, Baylor. 24, Marquette. 25, Georgia. Okay, UGA, I see you. 
All right. But keep in mind, these rankings, especially the first week rankings that come out, like the preseason ones, they're really fickle because, like, you know, they're basically going off of last year's performance. And usually these teams are completely different from last year. Like, for example, like Florida, they're ranked number 11. They didn't have the greatest season last year. Be Well, I mean, for them they did, kind of, but they lost their starting setter. So that's really, really hard. So she's back this year. So, you know, they could be beating a number two team because they're that good, you know? So it's all it's all relative. But anywho, those are the rankings. Now let's move on to the next topic. Let's talk about beach volleyball recruiting. I got a question actually um, on my YouTube. Someone left a comment and they're asking me, Jacoby, like, what are, like, what's the process for recruiting for beach volleyball? And I was like, that is a great question. I don't think I've ever touched on that before on my channel. Probably not. Because, like, I mean, I played beach, but, like, you know, I was an indoor girly. <laughs> so I would say the process for recruiting for beach is just the same as indoor. Um, and honestly, you're in luck. If you want to play beach in college, like the time is now for sure, because there's so many schools that are coming out with their own beach volleyball program. So that means that there's more opportunities to play in college. There's more spots. There's more money. Okay, yeah, there's more scholarship money to be given if there's if it's especially if it's a new team, they're looking for players. They need players to play, you know what I mean? So this is a this is just a really exciting time because a lot of schools are starting to come out with it, even at the lower levels like D two, D three, NAIA, like there's beach is really making its come up. So if you want to get into it and you're like of age, like the perfect it's the perfect time for sure. Now, as for recruiting purposes, I would say stick to, like, what you know and, what like, what I've been saying. But, yeah, listen to what everything I say. Just kidding. But, um, like, basically, you want to be having a film of you playing. That is so important, like, for real. Like, you need footage of you playing, period. Because, like, say that you're from the great state of Texas and you want to go play in Washington State. You know, that's pretty far. That's pretty far away. And nine times out of 10 coaches that are like, let's say you want to go to the university of Washington. The coaches at UW probably are not going to be in Texas very often unless it's for like a club tournament. Then okay, sure. But that's indoor. I don't even know if there's club for beach volleyball. Actually, I know there is, but it's very small and it's kind of niche. Like there's a club here in Birmingham, but like it's very, you know, it's very niche. Like, it's a very small sport still. So it's still growing. So um, you might not have the same reach as indoor girlies would when it comes to club. But that means that you can have footage of yourself playing, um, practicing, maybe like a skills video, and you can send those out to coaches. So that way you can connect with those coaches at UW and be like, hey, like, I'm so-and-so, I'm X feet 11 inches tall and this is I'm a blocker and here's footage of me da, 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 I'm interested whatever you know send out your little email and that's one great way to get recruited on top of that I would say that some schools do have established beach programs and they might and they might have summer camps and I've touched on summer camps for my indoor girly pops um a couple videos ago but you know they might have camps that you can go to and I feel like that's a great opportunity to get seen and I feel like the more established beach programs like the top of the top is going to be like your California schools because you know I feel like everyone who is from California I don't know I'm not from California I'm from Alabama so I'm like mm, I don't really know I feel like from what I've gathered everyone who plays volleyball grew up on the beach somehow some way and they were playing beach that's why they're so good at indoor. I, I'm telling you, it's such good cross training if you play beach and then you can transition to indoor or you can play both or vice versa, whatever it is. But I feel like they're always on the sand. They grew up on the sand. That's how they, you know, started playing volleyball. So usually the best programs are out there. So like UCLA, their team is insane. They're so good. They're always contending for the national championship every year. USC, I'm pretty sure USC has won the past three national championships in a row you know they're so talented and you'll see those girls like play for team usa but you know who's also a really good team my alma mater lsu baby go tigers yeah their beach program is insane and that's not typical for an east coast southern school but they are amazing but yeah oh also pepperdine's really good at beach volleyball cal poly you know but there's schools all, all over the country. Like, for example, South Carolina has a really good beach team. Um, my friend Hallie, I don't know if she's going to watch this, but she was playing beach at North Florida. Like, they're very, very good teams. So, you know, there's teams all over the place. You just really have to look. So I really hope that answers the question. <laughs> and once again, this is a good place to plug this. If, if you have any questions that you want answered, 
I will answer them in the comments. So leave a comment down below, but I will also go in depth like I did for that comment um, in the next episode of Volleyball Talks with Jacoby. So make sure you leave a comment down below of any questions you have and you'll, and you'll be featured in the next episode. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So my next topic is my volleyball bucket list. Oh, I have been itching to talk about this because I feel like it's just so fun. So I've been compiling my volleyball bucket list for years now, you know, because I've been playing volleyball for, oh my God, I'm old. Oh my gosh, probably 12, 13 years, something like that. So it's been a while. Yeah. And I have loved it ever since I started it in seventh grade. So that means I have really built up quite the bucket list because, you know, I have been watching. I'm a fan of volleyball. I love watching it and I love consuming it. So I see these teams play and I'm like, I need to be there. So I made a bucket list for my volleyball wants. So first of all, I've already scratched off one of them, which I'm so grateful that my husband took me because I literally, I mean, I didn't drag him. He wanted to go because I wanted to go. But like, <laughs> you know, because um, when I was living out in California, the Hawaii men's volleyball team was playing at UC Irvine. And I was like. I have to go. It, it was literally the Big West semifinal. And I was like, I have to go. Like, period. Like, I cannot freaking miss this. Are you kidding me? So I got my husband to take me. I was like, listen, after you get off work, we got to go. Because Irvine was not that far from where we were living. So I was like, we got to go, please. That was like one of the best experiences, volleyball-wise, I've ever had. The crowd was so electric. Hawaii has some of the best fans Especially when it comes to the men's volleyball team. So I was like, I was lit. Okay. I was so happy. And even my husband had a good time. He was like, wow, like the crowd's like crazy. And he, you know, he doesn't even really like volleyball like that. I'm like, he likes it because I like it. But, but you know, like that's crazy. It was so much fun. So I, I scratched that off my bucket list. That's been on my bucket list for a while. Cause I've been watching Hawaii men's volleyball for a long time. Um, and then another thing I've already scratched off on my bucket list is seeing UCLA men's volleyball in person. I saw them when they played Morehouse in Atlanta. And then I also saw them again when they played UC Irvine. Yeah, it was so much fun. It's always so much fun to watch UCLA volleyball. Like, bro, <laughs> it's always so much fun. Um, so now let's actually talk about the stuff that I have not accomplished yet on my volleyball list. And I, I will get there one day. I want to go to a Hawaii men's home game home game like in Honolulu home game now that's a stretch that is a huge bucket list huge bucket list thing um but one day I feel it will it will happen I will make it happen because I want to go so bad like a game in the stand stop I feel like that'd be so much fun and I'm really looking forward to when that day comes and I will vlog it obviously because I vlog everything <laughs> Um, my next bucket list is I want to go to the men's and women's national championship, like for the NCAA. I'm so excited because I feel like this year it actually might be close to where I'm living. So let me see. Let me Google it. Where is the men's, no, women's volleyball NCAA championship 2024? Okay. It's in Louisville. Eh, that's not very close to where I live, to be honest. I wonder where it is in 2025. But, I mean, that's just one thing that's on my bucket list. Oh, it's in Kansas City. Also not close to me. Bruh. I wish they would have it in New Orleans one year or something. That'd be awesome. But, anywho, that's on my bucket list for sure. Next, I want to go to a Texas women's volleyball game at home. I feel like that would be insane. Because, y'all, if you've seen um, on YouTube or any kind of replay of Texas women's volleyball, you know their home gym is crazy like the fans are so cool they're always like point texas like it's so much fun Ugh, i want to go so bad i also want to go to a nebraska home game <laughs> because once again the atmosphere is crazy um and then i also want to go to a big 10 volleyball game just any big 10 team i really don't care because i mean that is just like the top level of college volleyball i maybe i'm biased but i'm telling you it is insane so i really want to go to one i might t i'm trying to talk my husband um, cause he's from Illinois. So I'm trying to be like, Hey, like <laughs> take me to, to an Illinois game, please. Oh, that'd be so much fun. Um, and then lastly, I want to go to, I mean, this is like an ongoing list. I want to go to an AVP tournament. This is where my ball is actually from. Literally AVP. 
I feel like that'd be so much fun. Like, I don't really love being outside, but, like, I feel like I would love to be outside watching a volleyball game, you know? And also, I really want to see a certain duo. I want to see um, the two LSU duos um, on the women's side, Kristen Nuss and Taylor. I want to see them play. They're so good, obviously, and they did really, really well during the Olympics this past summer. Um, This past summer, as if it was, like, a month ago. It was literally, like, last week, two weeks ago. Anyways. Um, and then on the men's side, I want to see Crab and sander taylor squared come on like that is an insane duo they're so good if you don't know taylor sander used to play indoor volleyball on like team usa all that he was a very very extremely talented player but he transitioned from indoor to the beach and he is insane insane like his arm his vertical bro i could go on for days and then his partner taylor crab is equally as talented so good so that is my volleyball bucket list and i will continue to add to that and let me know if you have any bucket list um, things that you want to do volleyball wise. That'd be so fun to know. I feel like on this episode, I'm yapping, yapping. Maybe this is, maybe this is a podcast. Who knows? Okay. Let's see. Okay. Someone asked me, do you have to be friends with your teammates? <laughs> I think this is actually a funny one because personally I was friends with the majority of my teammates, like probably 99%. There was maybe always one girl that we just never got along or she didn't like me. I didn't like her or whatever it was, but you know, that's bound to happen. Not everyone is designed to like each other. Now, the tricky thing is, is that when you're teammates, you kind of have to like each other, unfortunately, because (laughs) it's so important to volleyball chemistry to like each other when you're playing like six V six, especially because it's hard to like communicate with someone you don't like. So, and also it's, really obvious like if I was a coach it's extremely obvious to me when people when girls like aren't getting along it's so obvious I'm like bruh please like we do not we do not have time for this like you have bigger fish to fry than like to be beefing with some girl on the court hello like beef when you're like beef when the game's over (laughs) like now as of now like let's pass this ball you know what I mean so yeah being friends with your teammates is definitely complicated not on the positive side of things like I'm still friends with girls I play volleyball with in seventh grade like high school like And, like, my best, like, my best friends are literally girls I play volleyball with. I was literally in my, like, one of my really, really close friends' wedding, like, as her bridesmaid, because we played volleyball together. Literally, that's how we met. I think there's really good pros to, like, being friends with your teammates, because I feel like they last forever. Now, you know, you're not going to get along, you're not going to get along with everyone. That's just, and that's okay. Like, not everyone has to like you, and you don't like everyone. That's okay. But the key is just putting your differences aside to play volleyball. That's very important. Just saying. Okay, someone asked me how to be coachable. Okay, that's a good question. I feel like how to be coachable is kind of complicated for some people because people have different personalities and some personalities just do not mesh. That kind of goes back into like being friends with people that are your teammates because sometimes like, you know, your teammates, you just don't have the same personalities. Like, like I'm friends randomly. I'm like best friends with a girl randomly who's from Portland, Oregon. And I'm literally from Alabama. I would never have met her if... It wasn't for volleyball. And you would think, like, we and we honestly have different personalities, like, completely different personalities, different interests, but we still, like, bonded over one thing, and that's what really brought us really close together. So, so I just think that's really funny. But anywho, back to what I was saying. I actually forgot what I was saying, so that's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was talking about how to be coachable. So it all goes back to, like, personality, I feel like. If you're, like, a combative person and you don't take criticism well, you're not going to be coachable. That's just my experience as a player and as a coach. So from my coaching perspective, I would say if someone's being coachable, that is someone who is going to listen to what I'm saying to them and try to apply the correction that I give them the first time. Because as a coach, I feel like it's my job to give you something tangible that you can actually take and apply instantly so you can see some kind of results so you don't get like discouraged. So that means that you have to be able to receive that criticism and take it and not let it hurt your feelings because I feel like as a coach like I'm not going to personally attack you I'm not going to be like you suck you're so bad why did you do that you're so stupid like that's that's not right and that is like a personal attack I feel like that's not how a coach should coach someone especially children (laughs) or anyone for that matter but especially kids like come on now But, like, if it's outside of that and it's not personal, it's like, hey, like, I noticed when you're blocking that you're not pressing over the net, you're just jumping super high. Like, one way you can get more blocks is to press over the net and use your core and press over into that hitter's space and maybe you'll get a block. 
okay, now I want you to try that on your next go around. Maybe we're doing a blocking drill or something, and then and I'll tell them, hey, I want you to try that on your next go around. I'll watch you and then come back to me so I can tell you, like give you feedback and stuff. And I feel like that's perfectly fine. But now I feel like some people could take that as, oh my god, like she thinks I'm, she thinks she she thinks I'm bad. She thinks I can't do it. Da da da. That's not true. Like, that's not what I said. So I feel like you have to, like, really separate your feelings sometimes from volleyball, which is hard to do because volleyball is a very emotional sport, I will say. Because you see people celebrating, like, yes! Or you, see some, or you see some people lose, like, a game, a really important match. They lose the point and they're, like, despaired, heads down, like, ooh. But, girl, you got to, like, you can't take things personally. And I really learned that, like, on the flip side of things because I, like, I feel like... I used to take things a little personally, but then honestly, I got over it. I was just like, they're trying to help me. Like, I feel like, and especially when I saw results from what they were telling me, I was like, okay, like, they're trying to help me. Like, they're not trying to tear me down or anything. So I feel like that's really important to being coachable is being able to receive criticism and well. Um, also, another thing is being able to listen. <laughs> Listening is a very important skill to have just in your life, let alone volleyball. But just to keep it in the vein of volleyball, like, being – coachable is being able to listen so once again it's like if I'm telling you hey like go touch the baseline on the other side run back and then touch the 10-foot line come back and you're like okay and then you just run to the baseline and run back you weren't listening you weren't listening do it right you know what I mean so that's another part I feel like that's a part of listening is being able to take the information process it and do it correctly that's just me though that's just me. Now, as a player, listening is very important because say like your coach tells you like, hey, I want you to hit the line on this next ball. I notice that the setter's creeping up and no one's defending the line. It's completely open. Okay. If you go and you hit the ball cross, you weren't listening. And I'm so guilty of that. I will, honestly, I feel like I was not a good listener when I was playing volleyball. So honestly, apologies to all my coaches. <laughs> but it's like, obviously you weren't listening because you didn't do what they told you to do do so I feel like that's important basically basically just being open to criticism and separating your feelings from volleyball essentially um listening and basically just being respectful but I feel like those are all kind of like in the same realm of things so that's my answer in a very roundabout convoluted way okay last question I feel like this video is getting long so I'm so sorry but um someone asked me did I enjoy playing club volleyball in college now, if you didn't know, there are clubs in college that are for volleyball players. And meaning that you literally have a whole team and you go and play tournaments. It's literally just like club volleyball in high school, but just in a college setting. And let me tell you, it is so fun. It is so fun. Now, I would suggest club volleyball in college for people who don't want to play in college, like on the actual varsity team, because that is a huge commitment, a huge time commitment, money effort, all that stuff. So it's very important that like, but I feel like it's very important to be involved in college. And I feel like club volleyball is a great option for people. It's so much fun. You're around people who are like-minded. So you'll probably instantly make friends because honestly, it's hard to make friends in college. Okay. It is very hard um, because it's a little bit more isolating than high school. Like you're kind of on your own. And also, like, people really aren't there to, like, kind of set you up. Oh, like, hey, this is so-and-so. Like, let's be friends. Like, no. Like, that's not really how it works. So being in a club, I feel like, really exposes you to people that maybe you wouldn't have talked to in the first place. And I feel like it's just a really, really fun experience. Because it's literally, like, club. And this club is so much freaking fun. So when you're, like, kind of just doing that, like, in a college setting, it is so much fun. Like, you get to travel still. You get to, you know, be with your teammates all the time. You get to practice, like, normal. Like, when I was playing club volleyball at LSU, um, we practiced maybe, like, three times a week for two hours. And honestly, like, that, that was a very competitive team. Like, that team was very good. And that's what I don't want people to think. Like, oh, like, club volleyball at college is just, like, a bunch of people messing around. No. No, these, like, these girls are good. They are very good. I don't want people to think it's, like, a super low level of volleyball because it's actually not. And I was expecting that because, like, before I knew better, I was like, oh, like, I feel like it's going to be such a drop in level of play. And I really don't want that because, like, I'm a very competitive volleyball player. Like, I like good volleyball. So I was like, I cannot take that. But then I got to the tryouts and then practice and I was like, okay, like, okay, like, this is, this is legit, like, this is so much fun, so I would really suggest it for people who just don't want to play varsity volleyball, but they still want to play, 
in college, I feel like that's such a good option. But you guys, that is the end of this little episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this format. I haven't found like a secure, like, you know, permanent filming spot because I feel like this is just a super on the go kind of thing. Like it's not like serious. <laughs> so I feel like this was really comfortable because I feel like last time I was like literally on the bed and I was like, like my back was like, Ugh. but in this chair, bro, I'm chilling in this chair. But yeah, anywho, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so much and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.